Hello everyone, I am Cool Guy. welcome back. For the past week or so, a quest to roam around the corridors of time was out, and the best and brightest in the Destiny community came out and made it their goal to crack the code. And this code unlocked an exotic a week early. There's been a lot of community chatter about that, and this video isn't for that, because we have a lot to talk about today as far as the actual weapon. But I do plan on taking time and talk about the season and how that quest was executed in a video at a later date. Today's review is about the first ever kinetic fusion rifle in Destiny's history, Bastion. This is a 780 charge time with liquid coils, similar to the Epicurean and the main ingredient, and being that it's in the kinetic slot, that opens up your loadout to pairing it with good energy options. There's a lot to this exotic, and I think that there's a lot of things to learn in today's video with how the bullets come out, the range, the charge, how it acts, it's very unique. I have the stats on the screen, since it's so unique, I'm not going to compare it to Epicurean and main ingredient because it's in its own league, it's kinetic. What we can pay attention to is the aim assist stat of 65, which which is very sticky, in the recoil direction stat of 75. It hits the curve perfectly, and it's pretty much vertical recoil. It has three perks that alter its stats. We have hammer forge rifling, composite stock, and liquid coils. Liquid coils increases impact damage, but makes you have a longer charge time. Its exotic perk is Saint's Fist, charge to fire three spreads of kinetic slugs. Each slug comes out in a consistent hexagon shape every single time. And we're going to say it shoots three volleys of seven slugs, each in a perfect hexagon shape. Each one of these slugs does damage, so 21 total damage points, and these points are consumed by one shot from the fusion. As I go on here, I want to break Bastion down in simple terms, not get too consumed and wrapped around what it is, we're going to be talking about more so what it actually does. Yeah, it's classified as a fusion rifle, it has a charge time, but with slugs it kind of acts like a shotgun with its spread, a consistent shotgun spread at that. And I'll get back into this in the PvP section on what it's actually doing and what it does. I've looked around, I've seen on LightGG that out of 5 stars, it has a 1.4 rating in PvE and 2.4 in the Crucible. Now I'm unsure if people are just review bombing this thing due to the quest and the puzzle, and again, I will get into that at a later date, but I personally think these numbers are way off, and I'm going to talk about why. Its second exotic perk is Breakthrough. A portion of this weapon's damage bypasses elemental shields. This is a cool perk. It's a very cool perk. Every weapon in Destiny has a job. These are tools in your toolbox. And even if you don't like what you see, remember that it does this. Because who knows when it's going to come up. When it says that a portion of this weapon's damage bypasses elemental shields, that's exactly what it does, and it does it well. Here's what this perk is actually doing. When the shields are down, you see that each pellet is doing full damage. There are 21 damage numbers on the screen right here, each slug from the three volleys. The damage is 1,349 or 1,350 per slug that's doing full damage. But right here, we can listen in. I'm only shooting one volley because I'm stopping the other two from coming out. One volley is seven slugs, but we see here there are 14 damage numbers. This is because each slug splits the damage. One number is hitting the shields directly, and the other is bypassing them and actually hitting the health bar. So we see these damage numbers. They're 877 and 472 or 473. You put them together, that's exactly 1349 or 1350. So no matter what, it's doing full damage. And even though you're hitting shields on a shielded enemy, you're bypassing it and you're actually hitting the health bar. Take it as you will, but I believe that this is a very solid perk. This means it's very good for something like Match Game. And right here in these clips, Match Game is on. I have an Arc Uriel's Gift, the shields are void. It would take forever to get the shields off, it doesn't matter what enemy, red bar, yellow bar. Bastion goes right through that, it bypasses the shield and just deletes them. So that's just the red bars, but it's very good versus higher tier enemies. Because you aren't messing with the shields at all, you tap them a bit, but the most important thing is that you're actually chunking the health bar down. Yes, this is match game, but this goes for any activity, match game just shows how much it can shine. And I've seen some people say, well it doesn't deal with shields too well, well that's because it's directly bypassing them, hitting the health bar. We all know that you should be geared appropriately, and the new osmosis perk on some primary kinetic weapons helps with that, but Bastion has a place, y'all. Obviously, matching energy to a shield is the best outcome, especially with something like Disruption Break, but remember that it does this. This is very unique, and this is honestly the full body of work for PvE. This is what you should use it for. I could be way off, I don't know, but I do think it's just a tad bit better than that 1.4 rating. Knowledge and understanding is half the battle here. It specifically states elemental shields, it doesn't bypass anti-barrier champions, phalanx shields, vandal bubbles, things like that. For PvE, it has a place. 
Moving on to the Crucible, I want to bring this up again and break it down in its simplest terms. Forget that it has a charge time. A charge time hasn't stopped Aaron Till and other fusions. A charge time doesn't stop Devil's Ruin, the recent exotic sidearm. You can play around the charge time. And also forget about how the slugs kind of work as a shotgun, and they do work like a shotgun. What it is, in its simplest terms, is very, very consistent within its effective range. It's one of the most consistent weapons in the game within its effective range. It does 30 per slug, one volley of them is 210 damage, so since it shoots 21 slugs with all three volleys, it does massive damage. 30 damage per slug, a potential 630 damage per shot taken. This little clip right here is very important as we go on. I'm stopping the other two volleys from coming out, so only one is gonna land. One volley can down a Guardian. Its range is right up to 16 meters, then it has fall off. You can get kills past that, but you do want to be within range. That's where it's the most sticky with aim assist. And the further that you are, since it does come out as a shotgun spread, those scatter. Those slugs just kind of widen, and that's why you can't get kills much further than about 21, 22 meters. But that 16 meters is just outside regular shotgun range, but it's inside maximum fusion rifle range. The meter distance at 16 is that of a fully maxed out ranged sidearm or close to the Roadborne perk from Chaperone. With those two weapons though, and all the other ones, you have to be precise. Not with Bastion. You just have to aim on them, and in a second I will go into detail on what I mean, but a side note, something to know. Even though it loses its aim assist, even though it's way outside of its effective range, at extreme distances it has a fall off floor. Meaning that if a slug lands, it will do 10 damage always, no matter the distance. So maybe you land 2, 3, or 4, that could be 30, 40, 50, or more damage. I don't recommend that, but that's there for you to know. The second thing about Bastion that makes it consistent, and we talked about each volley doing 210 damage, it's how the three spreads come out. They come out back to back to back, not all at once, and that's huge for the overall feel of Bastion. As far as consistency goes, I've had many times where I'm getting shot and when I get flinched, the first volley gets thrown off. But since they do come out back to back to back, it has no problem getting right back on and taking them out. Even though flinch can throw off a spread, there's still 420 damage that's still coming out. The third thing is since that it shoots like this, that if you are tracking your enemy, one volley can miss, but you can still land another. You could miss two, and then still end up getting them with a third one for 210 damage. In my eyes, I don't care about the charge time, I don't care if Aaron Till can kill further. The only thing I care about is consistency. And those four things, 200 damage per volley, 630 total, shots coming out back to back to back, receives and overcomes flinch, the ability to miss a volley, still recover and get the kill, and the overall just massive damage that it does. It can take out any super in the game. It's one of the very few weapons that you can walk straight up to a titan bubble, go inside, and take out the titan. It shreds through overshields. It's very good. And also, I don't really compare it to any other fusion or shotgun, because I went over what I care about, the consistency. That's key. I don't compare it to Aaron Till or any other fusion for that matter for a number of reasons. Number one, it's kinetic. Out of the gate, that's important, because I compare it with Trust, Not Forgotten, Luna, Horrors, Least, and many others. And the second thing about Aaron Till, it has under pressure, tap the trigger, firmly planted, backup plan, a long zoom scope. You can legit put this thing on a rope down to your target. So back to Bastion, within range, it's great. If it didn't send out the volleys like it does back to back to back, or it didn't have 21 total slugs, this would be a completely different review. I've had we ran out of medals, I've had 50 kill games, 40 kill games, getting 28 or 30 total Bastion kills in a single game. If you haven't noticed, when going up against it, it's very low key. It doesn't sound like a fusion, it just has a blue light. When it's charging, it's very faint, the sound that it makes. I did use it with mouse and keyboard a little bit. I'm still learning mouse and keyboard, but it felt good. I've seen players with MK straight up go off with it on PC, so I know it's good over there. With controller, you can really feel the stickiness of it. It feels really good in your hands. It's up to the player and what they find value in. Some aren't gonna find value in this with what I went over today. And that's all right. There are different tools for different people. I'm having a blast with it, and it performs way better than I thought it would. And I think in both areas of the game, it's better than a 1.4 and a 2.4. And as with anything with a charge time, you use that to your advantage, you pre-charge as someone is rushing you, or pre-charge as you're rounding a corner. It's very lethal 15 meters and in. It can take out supers. It can even take out multiple enemies at once as each volley comes out. I think it's fantastic. 
In conclusion, Bastion is unique that it functions as a hybrid shotgun with a charge time. In PvE, it has the ability to bypass shields and get to the actual health of the enemy. It bypasses elemental shields. When enemies have shields, Bastion does well. In match game activities, remember, Bastion is an option. It can shine. In PvP, it's very lethal and consistent 15 meters and in. The way the spread comes out allows you to take flinch well, and even if you miss a volley, another one can get on to land the final blow. Since it does such heavy damage, upwards of 630 base, it takes out everything and allows the user to be very relaxed when aiming. All you have to do is land slugs on the enemy. You don't have to aim for the head. It doesn't do precision damage anyway. If a catalyst later on allows it to get precision damage, watch out. It's going to be up to the user. All that really matters is if it fits with what you do, what you like to do with your playstyle. Me personally, I think it's a good weapon, and I'm not going to say it's bad because it's not bad. But then again, I'm not going to say it's great because it isn't quite there. It's almost there though. It's really, really good. It does warrant usage. It's not a dud. I would like to thank you for spending a little bit of your day with me. Not the quest, but the weapon itself. What do you think about Bastion? Let's talk about it in the comment section. Thank you for watching, and until the next one, I am Cool Guy.